Hello there, it's Cathy again from West Cumbria Rivers Trust. Welcome to episode two of our River School. So today we are going to have a look at some of the amazing freshwater wildlife that is found in our rivers in West Cumbria. So this is the first one. Does anybody know what that is? Sometimes people think it's a robin because it has got that sort of yellowy breast, but it's not a robin. They feed on invertebrates, little invertebrates that live in the rivers and streams. Well done if you get this right. It's a grey wagtail. So grey wagtails love to eat all the little invertebrates that, that live in the river, which we will find out more about in a little bit. Um, does everybody know what I mean by an invertebrate? So an invertebrate doesn't have a backbone. So we are a vertebrate. So we have our spine and our skeleton. So we're kind of hard on the inside and then sort of squishy on the outside. But an invertebrate, they don't have that backbone and skeleton. So they'll sometimes have a hard skin for protection and that's called an exoskeleton. So they almost really have their skeleton on the outside and some can live in a shell for protection. Can you have a little think of any types of invertebrates? What type of invertebrate can you think? Okay, we'll move on. Any ideas what this is? This is a fish. It's nocturnal, so it's most active at night. So at night, it's dark, so it can't really see very well at night. So can you see that bottom picture you can see really well? It's got sort of whiskers. So it uses those whiskers to find its food and find its way around. This is when, when we go river dipping, when I'll hopefully be coming to your school, when we can get back to normal and I'll be taking you to the river. Um, this is the most common fish that we catch when we're river dipping and it's called a stone loach. I bet you all know what this is. It's an otter. So an otter is a mammal and they are experts at hunting in the water. And you can see they've got this beautiful sort of streamline shaped body and that long thick tail to, to help them swim. And one of the cool facts that otters can do is they can actually sort of close their ears so they don't get water in their ears which is pretty cool. And some people say it looks like this otter's got nail varnish on. I don't think it has, but it does look like it, doesn't it? The next one, anybody know what this is? This is a, an Atlantic salmon. So these come up our rivers to spawn, to, to lay their eggs, and then they'll go back to sea so they can live in the sea and in the rivers, so fresh water and salt water. This is a beautiful type of fish, beautiful markings. And this is a brown trout or a sea trout. So it's actually the same animal, the same species, but if it's in the river, it's a brown trout. And if it's in the sea, it's a sea trout. So it's another fish that can live in fresh water and salt water. And they used to think that there were about 50 different types of fish because they all have such different markings, but they are just, it's that one, one fish, but they can look so different. Beautiful markings, be lovely to draw one. These are cool, aren't they? These are bullheads. Um, and a cool fact about a bullhead is it's actually the male that looks after the eggs and the male will stay by the eggs and can you see it's got these big fins and it will move these fins about to create lots of bubbles, lots of oxygen so the eggs have got lots of oxygen and it will stay there up to two weeks just fanning the eggs and making sure they've got lots of oxygen. Oh my goodness, what's this? A lamprey. Look at that mouth. Can you see it's got a like funny shaped mouth, it's got a round mouth with all those funny little teeth. And then you can see it's got these breathing holes 
by the side of its body. So this animal has been around since before the dinosaurs. So it's just so well adapted to its environment that it's been around for that long. Amazing, hey? Anyone know what this is? This is a, a European eel. Again, an incredible, incredible species. So eels, European eels all come from the same sea, the Sagasso Sea, and they travel thousands of miles to get across to, and then eventually into our, our rivers. Yeah, amazing. I think it takes them about three years to get across to Britain. Beautiful, I bet you all know what this is. This is a kingfisher. Kingfishers, if you see kingfishers by your rivers, it's a good sign that you've got a healthy population of fish because kingfishers have to eat their whole body weight in fish every day. So if you've got plenty of fish in your river, then it means you'll hopefully have some kingfishers along there too. Ah, this is my favorite bird. This is called a dipper. Um, and you might see this bird when you're out and about along by the rivers and it dips up and down. That's why I think that's why it's called a dipper. It sort of bobs up and down. Um, and it's really cool because it can fly, of course, it's a bird, but it can also swim. It kind of swims underwater and feeds on the invertebrates at the bottom of the river. Really cool. I bet you all know what this is. Some people say stork, but we, we don't have storks in Britain, but it's very similar, isn't it? It's a heron and it's Britain's largest bird. Yeah, incredible. Ah, now this is Britain's largest invertebrate. So can you remember what an invertebrate is? So can you see it's got an exoskeleton to protect it? This is a crayfish. Oh, my favourite invertebrate. This is called a case caddis fly larvae. So that little bug there is a larvae which will eventually turn into a caddis fly. And caddis flies they look a little bit like moths. But because they're very vulnerable, can you see that it actually makes itself a tiny little, little case? And you can see this one on the left, it's made of tiny, tiny, tiny little stones. Now, it makes it look really big on this screen, but this is only, I don't know, maybe a centimetre or two. They're only small. So they're tiny, tiny little stones all stuck together with some special silk. Really cool to see. And then we've got here, we've got three different types of mayfly nymphs. So these will eventually turn into mayflies. We've got the burrowing mayfly nymph, which is, I think that's like the biggest one. You can see it almost looks fluffy. The flattened mayfly nymph and the swimming mayfly nymph. Ah, another one of my favourites. This is a, a stonefly nymph and you can see it's got those two tails there. Stonefly nymphs are particularly very, very vulnerable to pollution. So if you find stonefly nymphs in your river, it's a good sign. It means that there's not much pollution in your river. Anyone know what this is? This is a gusander. So you can see it's got that long, sort of pointy bit at the end of its beak. What do you think it might use that for? Do you think it's maybe been, it's adapted to be able to sort of eat the fish, catch the fish with that, that lovely sort of hooked beak? Now goosanders are pretty cool because um, the males, to try and impress the, the females, will do sort of a dance and the, the female will be most impressed by the best dancer. Anyone know what this is? I bet you all know, actually, you, you probably all think it's a shrimp, which you are right. This is a freshwater shrimp, so this is what you find in freshwater. Much smaller than the shrimps you find in the sea. Again, only sort of a couple of centimetres big in real life. Oh my goodness, what's this? Again, this is tiny, but this is a black fly larva. So these will turn into uh, black flies. Um, but it shoots out a cool bit of silk, almost like Spider-Man. It'll shoot out a piece of silk 
to grab onto, if it's in sort of fast flowing water, to, to grab onto the rocks. Black fly larva. Ooh, this is a cool one. This again, tiny flatworm. And last but not least, the freshwater mussel. These are amazing creatures, much bigger than the mussels you find on the seashore. These grow to about 15 centimetres in length and they can live to up to 100 years. Actually, some have been found to live for longer than that. We have freshwater mussels in a couple of our rivers in West Cumbria. And these are filter feeders. So if you can see, they've got these kind of flaps. So they filter the water. So the water flows through them and they'll feed on the algae and things in the water. Yeah, pretty cool. Okay, activities for you to do at home. You could draw your favourite animal and write down some interesting facts about that animal. You can find some animal fact sheets on our website and the link is in the description box to these. Or create your own river animal. So think of what types of adaptations it might have and post your creations on our Facebook page. We'd love to see them. Okay, I'll see you soon. Bye.